What is going on, everybody? It's February 21st, 2024. It's going to be the daily log episode over NQ and live stream review. So you guys were there today. You saw me take a loss. It's a normal part of the process. And <clears throat> today, to me, I'll go over it. There's a lot of really good learning points, and I hope you guys were able to learn something out of it. If you were paying attention, I think it was a really good session to pay attention to and be like, all right, I understand you know, certain signatures and price that are going to make this lower probability. How to understand that your trade's not on side, how to protect yourself if you're in the position, if you still think it is valid, but it's not displacing towards your drawing liquidity quickly enough. Taking off half of the position, even reducing your stop loss, or fully pulling out of the position. Today, I really wanted to showcase the example of being in the position and and journaling the time really in the trade. I think that's important. If you guys go back to your trades and journal the amount of time that you're in a trade versus you know your wins versus your losses, you're probably going to see the significance of time when your winning trades are a lot faster because they're moving away from your point of interest really quickly. Right? So your winning trades are usually they're on side quickly. And you want to you want to figure out this is what I did as well is you want to time and journal the time from when you enter in that position, how fast do you move into profit? How fast is that? Does that move in a minute, two minutes away from your drawing liquidity or from your point of interest, from your entry? Or does it meander around it? How quickly does it move away from it? And how immediately do you get into profit? And how long does it take to get to your target? Start to journal those things. You'll start to see a little pattern in there and characteristics of it. It'll let you know when you're on a trade, okay, I'm probably on side or I'm not on side. It'll let you know pretty quickly. All right, so I think that's a really good tip. Anyways, the daily time frame, we had a really wild end of day closure. I thought it was super interesting. I posted on Twitter. I thought that end of day macro <clears throat> is the last 30 minute window of the day is really, really interesting and fascinating to watch. Today, we had some reports come out, and that's the reason we saw this large volatility spike. That's something I wouldn't suggest being part of. I, I don't think many people would have been profitable in that position, to be honest with you. I'll show you. But if you annotate every single day, look at the last 30 minutes of trading, even the last 15 to 10 minutes, that last few macros are really, really interesting. You can make a career off of that. If you're very nimble, you know what you're doing. If you don't have time to trade AM, um, study that. So anyways, the, uh, the daily time frame. I've been annotating this. I've never let go of this idea that we've been inside of a bullish dealing range. So as simple as it, as it is, and looking at basic market structure, even with these advanced concepts, I'm still looking at basic market structure because it's what's telling the story. We're still inside of a bullish dealing range. I've been annotating this over and over again because I can't really call shorts. I can intraday, you know, take a short in here. But to really trust a narrative standpoint of we're going lower is I would have needed this low to be broken or somewhere, uh, you know, a closure today, if we were trading, closing through basically the mean threshold of this, then that would have let me know, all right, I'm probably bearish. But if you look at the closure today and what we reacted off of, look at this volume bounce I drew your attention towards and this last down close candle, which is your bullish order block. Inside of what? A discount optimal trade entry. And look at the closure of yesterday, technically, and then the open of today. Really beautiful. Let's go back out to the weekly. What I've been annotating on the weekly time frame, gun in my head. <clears throat> I said at least for the bare minimum, I could see the weekly Fair Valley Gap traded to. What do we do? We retraded back down into it. So we have the weekly Fair Valley Gap, which is the parent. So everything beneath that is going to submit to it. This takes precedence over everything else. Looking at the daily time frame, we drop down into a discount, volume balance, bullish order block. So for me, <clears throat> especially with the closure of yesterday and the movement of today, I'm going to be looking for higher prices from here. Everything points to me to look for higher prices. So when I go into tomorrow, into the session, what am I going to be annotating? Probably looking for higher prices because that is fully in sync. The monthly is bullish, the weekly is bullish, the daily is bullish, four hour, one hour, all these are going to be in line. It's going to be, to me, if there's a bullish setup, it'll be easy bread and butter. That's narrative, right? That's something that, I've been teaching and annotating over and over again is being in line with narrative, reading these higher time frames, getting in sync with it. Because if you don't understand it, then obviously you're not going to have a good grasp of what price is trying to do. So to me, this is an example 
of a just a higher time frame perspective of an internal range liquidity rate. So if you go to my charter member charter member models, a little bit of a tongue twister. This is model number two, where you're taking out internal sell side liquidity inside of a discount. You're reacting off of some type of discount PD array in here, and price is moving higher. You can reuse this. You can extract this and move this down into a one minute time frame if you'd like. But I'm using this on a daily time frame example because it's here. So I would like for price now, if we can gravitate higher into at least this high there and that high there. This is relatively not equal, but this is a example of low resistance liquidity run. There's two examples of there's low resistance liquidity run signature, and then there's just low resistance or high resistance. I'm sorry, this is actually high resistance. Low resistance is beneath you. But I'm going to keep it simple. Buy side liquidity, okay? So you can see, look at the beautiful movement today. That's what I want to see. I want to see fast, loose moving markets. Today, you saw how choppy and lethargic price was. It was very, very difficult to be inside of anything today. Look at this last portion I drew your attention towards. This I drew your attention towards last night and even today during the live session is that last portion of the four hour for value gap. So from that high down to that low, that's the remaining portion of the inefficiency resting inside of what? A discount, basically optimal trade entry. So from that dealing range low up to that high, we dropped down into a discount, taking out internal sell side. So all of these relative equal lows in here were taken out, which is internal sell side liquidity, trading down into a discount bullish PD array displacing away from it. Look at the bodies respecting it. So <clears throat> from here, I'm going to be looking at everything above us. So that high there and any inefficiencies on the left side here, I'm going to draw out in time. And that's what I'd be looking for is to draw on liquidity. So extend out any inefficiencies in here. You can see this one is now an inversion closed above it. We have this four hour Going into overnight, I'm going to probably suspect we're going to consolidate or move very little. That's my prediction. We have a news event driver tomorrow, uh, one hour before the open. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out before the open. I probably won't be. I know I won't be trading it. I'm going to wait for the open and probably do the silver bullet. I'm going to, regardless of what's happening today, I'm executing my rules. So, and here's a really good example. Um, I, this is another example to me. This is a really a false rally. A lot of people are going to be chasing this, especially into overnight. I, I made this example last week. It's more or less experience, but I believe there's going to be some consolidation in here because we've had this rapid movement higher. Just just try to think for a second. Do you see that a candle just, just immediately just starts sprinting off higher in here with no retracements, no consolidation? To me, it just doesn't seem likely. My experience is telling me that yeah, we're probably going to consolidate. No reason to FOMO. No reason to be you know fearful. Even if it overnight we ran to these buy side liquidity pools, who cares? There's always going to be another trade. So if this was happening in a session, I, I would have these same thoughts and same feelings about it. Um, so <clears throat> refine all those areas that are on the four hour. Refine it into the one hour. I'm not going to do it here, but refine that down. And then you're going to extend out everything from the left side, extend it out to your right. And that either is price going to reach into it or we can utilize it as an inversion, a support um, area for price to go higher. Let's go over today. Just briefly, I don't, <coughs> excuse me, I don't think that anything was extremely significant. And it's something that I'm not taking away from myself, especially on days where I, even if I lose, I'm still congratulating myself. I'm still trying to pull out every single positive thing that I did, which if you look at, I think I'm on the right, wrong chart. I am on the wrong chart. I'm sorry, that was, that was the other one. Um, yeah, you can see here, this is my Twitter post. I'm going to take this away. But what I want to annotate today is if you were during the live session, I was able to annotate back when we were over here, price taking out both sides. And to me, that's still beautiful. That's still me exercising the concepts and my discipline and my analytical skills in real time. Even though if I took a loss, I still look back and think, man, I was I still pinpointed exactly where price is going. And I used to not be able to do that. I used to not be able to see price like this. So it's a blessing and 
even if you take a loss, try to pull out what you did well that day and congratulate yourself, cheerlead yourself, let yourself know, hey, I'm, you know, I may have done something not even wrong. You just took a loss, but look at the positives. It, it helps you, encourages you. These things are very important. But from the open, I was annotating the sell side. If you want to go back to the live stream, no hindsight in here. I annotated the sell side being taken. I also annotated that we we're likely to rally towards the buy side in here. There just wasn't any entries that I would have really preferred in here. In hindsight, when I'm looking at it, <clears throat> there was a discount fair value gap in here right at the silver bullet open, which preferably that would have been the best entry today. It was very low resistance, very easy, but we traded down into it again. I would have, this is something in hindsight that I'd be like, oh, that, you know, I could have taken that, but in real time, I would have never taken this. Um, because we traded down into this inefficiency once, traded away from it. There was this another inefficiency in here where I was annotating, I could have possibly taken a long in here, but I was looking at a five minute time frame as well. And we weren't above, there was a Sibby in here where we didn't fully close above it. So I wasn't very certain. I wanted to turn that into an inversion before I really started to look for longs. But we dropped down into this right at the silver bullet. And from there, it was off to the races. I mean, in three minutes, it delivered right into the buy side. So um, I, again, I wouldn't have taken this real time. I have to be completely honest. I would have never taken it. I didn't take it. So I can't sit here in hindsight and be like, you know, I'm going to take that. I'm proud I just didn't do anything. Um, but hopefully you guys are able to see that. I mean, I was at least able to annotate the sell side being taken and then immediately switch and be like, all right, buy side is going to be ran. So to me, this is an intraday. This is not me utilizing narrative. Uh, this is me utilizing if we're in a really tight, small range for the day. I'm just looking at intraday highs and lows like the session. And I'm looking at, all right, where would I feel uncomfortable putting my stop loss? After sell side was taken, I would not feel comfortable putting my stop loss up here. So you can see anybody that had sell stop or buy stops up here were immediately taken out. So it was just cool to study, able to see that delivered. Now, after this, what is this telling me? I annotated this in real time. We're in a tight range. Higher time frame is pretty unclear where we're going. We've taken out sell side, buy side, and we have no news event drivers for the day. So as soon as we move into this range, I'm not looking at this as a long opportunity. I was annotating this in real time how this is not a viable option for me. Because A, if I was leading towards anything, it was going to be lower prices today. And we've taken out sell side, taken out buy side, so we neutralize the board. And for me, when I see this signature in price where it's seek and destroy, you're taking out sell side, buy side. Think about this in terms of you know where the money is at. The board's neutralized. Either price needs to engineer liquidity, and usually that's what it's going to do. And you can see we consolidated for the next, I don't know, half hour or so, just meandering around in here. My old self would have seen this large displacement higher, and I would have wanted to get into price because I see it move higher. There's a fair value gap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in long. But it, price was not pointing to me to go long today in that particular moment in time. And B, the seek and destroy profile was telling me, I, I need to sit still. Don't do anything. Don't do anything stupid. So as soon as we dropped off lower in here, I annotated this inversion, which I didn't take an entry off of. And then we displaced away from it. And when we dropped off lower in here, this is where price just kind of, um, I don't want to say that I, got seduced into it, but I was talking about how price in these conditions are like Medusa or like a rattlesnake where it's showing you something that's false. It, it can kind of seduce you to get into price when it's really nothing's happening in here. But I was utilizing the model where I'm 75% complete to the drawn liquidity down here. And at that point in time, if I could see that, all right, we've taken sell stops, buy stops, and then we drifted off lower, we're likely to lead into the sell side the narrative at this point in time was bearish, and then we printed a fair value gap in here. So to me, when I take took this trade, I was like, all right, well, at least I can find a small scalp into the sell side liquidity and see if this thing can reach lower. So in hindsight, the only thing I would have told myself is, A, there just isn't enough meat on the bone from this fair value gap. I mean, from that fair value gap into the sell side, it's about 20 handles. If this thing really ran today, I was going to try to hold it for 40, 50 handles. And I was going to utilize standard deviations. So from that swing high down to this low, I'm inverse kind of finding my standard deviation. So if I could get it down to negative 0 0.5, I was going to do that. Ultimately, I was stopped out, but price was meandering around in here. 
my stop loss went above the bearish order block in the inversion because those are two PD rays. So again, to me, if I'm giving myself criticism, the, again, I was aware of the fact that we were in seek and destroy. I was probably going to be wrong. And <clears throat> only thing I could have told myself is there just wasn't enough, um, at least in the moment of time, drawing liquidity for me in terms of risk reward. But nothing else I can do. I executed the model and executed what I, you know, did in, in that moment of time. I can't beat myself up in hindsight. In hindsight, of course, you're going to learn things. But in real time, this is all the information that I knew. So I didn't know all this prior information. So um, try not to give yourself so much criticism when you go back in your journal. But in here, you can see we're just meandering around. And I took off a half of, of the position off. And I was showcasing how in here, if I was in a live environment, I mean, most people are not going to believe me, but if I was in a live environment, I would have took out of the position probably and I got back to close to break even because of how much time was being spent. This is a lot of time from this point where I entered all the way over here. I mean, I'm spending basically a half hour in a position on one minute time frame. That's a lot of time. But I kept half of the position on just to showcase, okay, the importance of time. If I'm spending a lot of time in a position, it's not a good sign. It's not something I want to be a part of. It's not something that is high probability. The best case scenario is to collapse the entire position and move on with the day. Move on to a different session. Move on to a different day. Um, and you can see here I was eventually stopped out. So my stop loss was above here. And then <clears throat> from here, I just logged off. There's no point in me trying to push anything. Because at this point in time, we've taken out sell side, buy side, dropped lower, engineered sell side. So I don't want to be pushing longs. There's no reason to do so. I'm clearly wrong on the short bias. So what am I supposed to do? Nothing. The best case scenario is to do nothing. So from that point in time, we eventually did drop off and take out sell side. Am I upset or mad about that? Not at all. There's nothing I could have done. There's nothing else I would have done differently. The only thing I could have done is just stay out which a uh, journal is like, you know, if you see that type of condition, just stay out of the entire day. But overall, I think this today was really, really sloppy. The only thing that was actually decent and there really wasn't any entries, I just like the delivery of price was the end of day macro. So the last 30 minutes of price from 1530 to 1600 New York local central time, this last 30 minute window, look at how price was meandering around doing nothing. And guess what we're doing? We're consistently taking out sell side liquidity here there taking out sell stops here underneath the low there and what are we doing we're leaving relative all these clean highs we're leaving relative highs here and guess what price does it's a beautiful example of price spooling meaning it's fast snappy delivery within a certain time window Look directly when this happens. If anybody believes these concepts don't work or the algorithm isn't real, it's based off of time. Time is the number one factor, the very the number one variable of these concepts. Exactly. Is this a coincidence that 1530, where we're educated upon the last 30-minute window, it starts at 1530 and then immediately starts spooling in a rapid delivery towards buy side liquidity engineered here? I mean, that's not that's not fake. That's not <laughs> you can't fake that. So once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's beautiful, and it gives me confidence, especially if you take a loss. It's like, man, these concepts work. It's just you as the user who is messing it up. You're reading it incorrectly. So in here, there's really no entries, but it's just a beautiful delivery in price. Unless I was on a 15-second chart, I there's no way I would have been able to participate in this run unless we drop down into this inefficiency here. There's a small one right there. It's too high in a premium at this point in time. We've already reached this buy side, so you just gotta got to let it go. You can see the report happened after the close. Well, to, to me, the close of the day is at 1600. The actual close is at 1700, or technically 1800 is when the day, new day opens. But the uh, the report came out. You see this rapid displaced lower. I mean, if anybody was trying to capture longs, I don't know how you would have held on to that. And then you see this rapid delivery higher. So to me, I'm really happy about this because it let me know, all right, price is probably now bullish. And it's going to give me clear direction moving into tomorrow and Friday. So I hope this day allowed helped. I hope um, it was useful. And until tomorrow, good luck and good trading, everybody. Be safe.